And a very warm aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of Five Questions, which is broadcast right here on KHVH Radio and also found at hawaiireporter.com and khvhradio.com. It's a delight to welcome uh, Jason Sturrock with us here today. He, of course, president of the Franklin Center for Government and Public Integrity. And, Jason, it's a delight to have you on board with us. Aloha to you. Aloha. It's a pleasure to be on uh, talking to you. Well, Jason, our format's pretty straightforward. We call it five questions, and that's exactly what we have for you today. So if we can start off with question number one, Jason. If you could help us out and describe the Franklin Center and also Watchdog, uh, Watchdog.org's mission, could you also help us with the overall emergence, your opinion, of citizen journalism, please? Well, the Franklin Center's mission in Watchdog.org, which is our primary uh, investigative news website, is to help train uh, empower, you know, bloggers, citizen journalists, non-traditional news organizations to go out and help fill the content vacuum that is being created in many states and localities because of the shrinking legacy media. As newspapers, and you've seen it in Honolulu where you've gone from two to one, uh, you know, publications, um, as they are firing reporters, getting rid of people who, on a daily basis, help tell you about what is going on specifically in government. There are many nonprofits and other organizations that are stepping up and saying, we will take on that responsibility. And that's why, you know, groups like Hawaii Reporter are so vitally important because they're help filling that news content vacuum with the good, in-depth investigative pieces that we used to see in the traditional media, but they don't have the time, training, or resources anymore to make that happen. And the rise of citizen journalists, you know, that that's the term. You know, you may know them as bloggers, but truly what they are is the person that is at the local level, at the park board level, at the state level, digging in and providing, in many instances, in many communities, the only original news content uh, about their government. I mean, uh, we have to remember, let's go back a few years when, when Dan Rather wrote the story about, mm-hmm. you know, President Bush and his question about his National Guard records. It was not traditional media that went in and exposed that it was a lie. It was a blogger, a citizen journalist, who spent the time to uncover the facts. Uh, and that's what, you know, is happening not only in Hawaii, but across the country. Uh, thank you for that very much, Jason, because it, it morphs into a little bit of question number two. And the example that you use is is well known, and I believe we've even had the chance to chat about that before. Are there other examples of mainstream uh, news stories, Jason, that uh, were picked up by mainstream news that were generated via, for instance, Watchdog.org and perhaps other independent news sources? Well, I mean, you know, the first story that, that brought the Franklin Center Center and, and Watchdog.org to national prominence uh, that ties in perfectly with your question was in 2009. Um, I'm sure you might remember, you know, the Phantom Congressional District story where, mm. the, you know, specifically Vice President Biden had been touting, touting the website recovery.gov as a way for people to go in and track the stimulus funding. And, and we had reporters, first they started off in New Mexico at, at, the, at, a, at a local think tank at the Rio Grande Foundation, went in to write a story about that website and how spending was going on in New Mexico, and he uncovered that New Mexico has 35 congressional districts. Well, as a native, he knows that there's at least three congressional mm-hmm. districts. Well, he wrote a story, then through our network across the country, eight more states wrote a story about what it had, about the numbers in their state, then ABC News picked it up, and then they went to Drudge, and then it was uh, the talk of the nation's uh, news cycle for, for days, and was named by you know some media watchers as one of the top ten uh, important stories uh, of 2009. Mm. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a national story. You can take the stories that are done, like at Hawaii Reporter, where uh, you know the investigation that I've done on human trafficking, um, you know, has appeared in newspapers from you know from Bangkok, you know, to the West Coast, and it, it's vitally important uh, that, that that continues to happen. Uh, Give you a recent example. It's a continuing story. Uh, uh, the re- investigative reporter at the Mackinac Center in Michigan, about two years ago, uncovered the fact that there were uh, labor unions, SEIU, and others that 
the government was coming in and forcibly unionizing home daycare workers. Hmm. They wrote about it, uh, uncovered it, um, and helped expose what was going on, and that it was happening in other states. You, you, you it happened in Kansas, and it, it tried to happen in Wisconsin. Um, you know, they just tried this past week in Minnesota to do that, and and our reporters on the ground helped uncover it and write about it, and helped not only cause other stories to be written in the legacy media, but policymakers, elected officials, to stand up and say, "Hey, this is going on, and we need to address it." Speaking of Michigan, uh, Jason, one story uh, that we were made aware of was a proposal by a Michigan lawmaker, and the proposal was to license journalists. Um, help us understand what the implication is here with this with this policy idea, and is this a sentiment that is shared by other entities around the country? Um, you know, I, I, I don't really think so. I, I, I think that that creates an incredibly slippery soap. Now, for entities or elected officials that want to control the media or have greater influence over them, this issue, licensing of or also the funding of the media and journalism, is something that will continue to be pushed. But the dangerous, the incredibly dangerous side of that is how how can you guarantee, how will you have a reporter who is dependent upon the government or the elected officials that they're going to write about either for funding for their paycheck or the license that they need to be able to do their job. When you have those two hammers holding over your head, are you as a reporter going to ask the really tough questions? I'd say that in most instances, people will not, and we will have a less aggressive fourth estate at a time when we need it more and more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boy, that is a, that's a profound statement and very um, taken very much to heart. Without a doubt, we're talking with uh, Jason Sturrock today, president of the Franklin Center for Government and Public Integrity. It's this edition of Five Questions, and we're at question number four for Jason. So, Jason, that said, is there in, as you refer to, legacy media, a political bias specifically to the left in news coverage? And if so, why is that? And how can we as news consumers discern the truth behind stories if that's the case? Well, I, 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 you know, you will always have the debate whether it's bias left, bias right. I think that there's a bias more towards uh, government. If you have a reporter who is covering government, dependent upon, uh, you know, them possibly for their next job, whether they're going to become the next press secretary, you know, for which elected mm-hmm. official, you're going to see more favorable coverage or less aggressive coverage. You know, the most important stories. And might not it can be the facts that are not asked about, and, and that's what's so uh, you know it can be so incredibly scary, and that's why it's so incredibly, incredibly important, you know, that the new organizations that are stepping up, you know, to fill this this vacuum, continue, you know, to produce good, hard hitting uh, investigative content that that other people can can rely upon. And and how do you as a consumer, you know, a lot of it is is that I I have true faith in the American people. Whether you're in Honolulu or you're in Hartford, Connecticut, I believe that that the American person, that the American citizen is smart enough to understand that if you put something in front of them that is biased, so biased that it doesn't present, that it is not credible journalism, they will see through it. And Mm -hmm. over time, those "Quote unquote news organizations will not have the credibility that they need to you know, be seen as a trusted source of real information uh, on a daily basis." And I have faith that the people, you know, w- will recognize that. But I encourage people to read multiple sources. You know, uh, we like to live by saying in the media that if your mother tells you she loves her, check your sources. Hmm. You need to do that as a consumer as well. You know. Uh, when you're out shopping, you know, you're looking for the lowest price. You're shopping around. You're looking at different sale ads. We should do that with media as well, especially in a time when the revolution in terms of how content is produced and shared from iPhones and iPads and flip cams and Blackberries, you know, to uh, information is created at a tremendously faster rate than it was like yesterday or the year before right. or, 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 or a year ago. So we as consumers have to make sure that we check multiple sources. 
We check multiple riders so that when we, uh, when we come along a site that we know we can trust, that is, it gives us information that we can rely upon and that we're willing to share, and when we share it with our friends, we add our credibility to it, then that's, the, that's an incredibly important thing. And that's what news organizations need to strive for on a daily basis. Uh, just as a quick aside, I understand also that uh, the Franklin Center also has an app that can be downloaded, and you can have portable information with you wherever you go. Is that right? Oh, that is. Yeah, we just we, we, we announced it in the last couple of days that you can go to our Franklin Center site and get, and get you know the, the smartphone app, mm-hmm. our Watchdog.org, which collects investigative stories from across the country, and our and well, you know our Statehouse News Online.com, which collects stories from capitals across the country. Uh, will be available for downloads so that you can get that cutting-edge uh, information so that you have access to as many sources of content, original news content, on a daily basis. Excellent. Well, Jason, we're coming up to our final question in five questions. And and uh, for us here at home, we sure appreciate your analysis of Hawaii news coverage. And based on the information that you've gleaned from various news sources, uh, what do you see as the most pressing issues for our state and, again, your assessment of the coverage that we have here, please. Well, I, I think that, you, you know, you, you're dominated by one, you know, one newspaper. And I think that, the other, you know, in, in while Honolulu and Oahu get a lot of coverage and a lot of focus, that the other islands seem to not have uh, as much uh, attention paid to or people creating original news content. That's why the idea of citizen journalism is so important that if someone is sitting on the big island and, you know, go to their local park board or their, you know, their local government, their city council meeting, and have the training, the skills, um, you know, to sit down and write about the budget or the debate that's going on, put it on their blog and share with their community, while they may not have a local paper that will pick it up, that community online will come to realize that that person is the only person out there providing that original news content. And that's what's so incredibly exciting that, you know, and, and I would encourage media outlets to look for these partnerships, you know, to find the individual that is willing to, you know, I'm willing to take five hours of my week to go and cover this park, this park board hearing. I'm going to write about it and train that person and equip them with the technology and and the tools and the treasure that they need to ensure that their neighbors and their community has all the info that they need to become better informed about what their government is doing. It's an excellent siren call for us, uh, Jason, and for all that are dialed in. uh, We've been chatting with uh, Jason Sturrock, president of the Franklin Center for Government and Public Integrity. It has been a delight to chat with you for five questions today, Jason, and... Uh, before we came on, understand that you'll be coming to Hawaii soon, and when that comes, we'd love to have you on board with us again. It would be my honor. Thanks so much, Rick. Jason, thanks so very much. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Aloha. Aloha to you, too. Bye now.